<laughs> well, I figured Holy this shit. nice headdress is not something that I would be able to get over my two tons of hair. That's true. This is this so is this, so this this was the time. This is a once in a lifetime attempt. Yes, yeah. So <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, you 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 like all out with this. Nice. I'm over here just like this aggression cannot stand, man. I got, I got a bathrobe. <laughs> Actually, this is official shit. So. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. It's it's I I, I want authentic because you know. <laughs> You're gonna go go all the way. Right. Because you know, gotta. <laughs> it's hard. I am to... back down to the normal amount of cats. You're back down. The... Yeah, you got the the kittens gone. Kitten went home today, and the not so feral cat from my porch is at the shelter to get oh. home. Oh, okay, so good. I am back down to the normal amount of cats. There is no such thing. There are always too many. Yeah. Always. Well, no. Too flippant. There's always not enough. No, too too many. Too, too many. There, there, no. No. There, too oh, um. Um. Are my cats fairies? That would be so cute. I don't think they'd let me put the dresses on them. Yeah, Sarah wanted to do... Uh, costumes for, for, for Grady, and I'm like, really? really? You think he's going to be cool with that? No, Grady's pretty chill. Um, No, he hates costumes. He really does. He's, he's, Simba he's... doesn't care as long as it's just like a collar. Like, he has a couple of little bow ties... And he doesn't, as long as it's just a collar. The girls, absolutely not. You need a little white Russian. I, yeah, well, yeah, you say that. I'm probably going to need a drink after show tonight. All right, let's, uh, let's get this underway. We're rolling. Each week, Catherine. That air audience, well, worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a second. We like to call. What the fuck is wrong? And uh, now I've got to switch fields. Though I'm wearing contacts, I can't. I can't see up close anymore. Yeah, We're it's old. Th there is a very vocal subset. Americans who are just like regulation smegulation. You, you you don't get to tell me what to do, Mr. Government man. Well, it turns out quite often, uh the old saying is the the, the uh regulations are written in blood. Um I I in in most cases no rank stupidity. Like this dude. Not over here. Ring. Man ordered to stop illegal charters. Violated order to start, stop illegal charters. Try that again. Man violated order to stop illegal charters. Then his boat caught on fire. Funny how that works. <laughs> oh yeah, that happens. Come on. Is that, is that... The sentence for illegal boat charters? They just set your boat on fire? No, no, no. That, I think that that's a little bit more cause and effect there. Detroit. A Michigan man violated an order to stop illegal boat charters on his 40-foot boat. And it caught fire with paying passengers aboard. Benjamin Michael Jones, 39, of Detroit, pled guilty Thursday to charges related to illegally chartering his boat. The U.S. Coast Guard ordered him to cease and desist commercial operations. Um, during June 2021, Coast Guard ordered Jones to cease all commercial operations until properly licensed and inspected. On August 10th, 2021, Jones violated the terms of the order by operating his boat known as Poor Tower. It's PWR Tower, but on Lake St. Clair, 
while uh, carrying paying passengers. I uh, carried out licensing and inspection prior to chartering the voyage. During that trip, the per tower uh, caught fire with the passengers aboard. Passengers were rescued. The boat was towed to shore by the Coast Guard. I Okay. Somebody is getting yelled at for booking a bargain basement cruise they saw on Craigslist. Is, is what I'm thinking here. Because... There's a reason we have these rules. There's a reason we have yeah. the inspection. It's to prevent shit like this. It's to prevent you dying on a fire on a boat. Because, you know... Hi, Charlie. Because <laughs> if you could get someone to just stop by on the boat and say, Hey, man that pile of oily rags over there next to those uh, tanks of gasoline and that small shifty eyed dude playing with the lighter. Probably bad. Not ideal. Not ideal. At all. And you know, when you stepped aboard this, when you set foot on this boat, you know, the vibe was, uh, are we going to die? Not immaculate. Yeah, because th this shit doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? You you yeah. kind of you know it doesn't look like you know a like super classy, fancy fishing boat with all. It doesn't look like that when this shit happens. It's like you're looking at the the picture. You're looking at the boat. You're looking at the, you in the right place. The fuck. Actually, when I went to the east coast a couple weeks ago i one of the hotels i booked i didn't read the reviews online in advance and i should have and i checked and like the lobby was gorgeous and then you got to the room and the room smelled strongly of mold like they do sure for sure and like it was one of those outdoor entrance motels and the guy like loudly announced my room number to the whole lobby so then I start looking up the reviews and they're like, oh, our room got broken into. Oh, there's mold everywhere. And I was like, yeah, I'm not staying here at the Bates Motel. <laughs> it's the only time I have like checked out of a hotel after an hour. I found another one up the road and I was like, nope, bad vibes. Yeah, well, you can check out of a hotel. If the boat catches on fire, you're like. Yeah. You can't be Your like options are limited. Yeah, they're very limited. Unless you feel like, you know, going for a swim and such. <sighs> Fucking hell. Just like at, at that point when you've got a floating death trap, shouldn't you just be like, you know, it it's time. I should let it go. I, I should, you know, hang it up. Nah. Nah, I'll just, who needs licensing anyway? Rule schmools. Yeah. For rubes. Okay, next up. I understand certain things that may not seem like they do, do in fact have a monetary value. In some cases, a large monetary value. But I really, I really want to know how you gather your friends together to sit down and plot a heist for gallons and gallons of bull semen. I... Two artificial insemination tanks have been stolen during a burglary in uh, Clogear County Tyrone. That's, that's Ireland. Um... They are thought to have been taken from an outbuilding, Bailiness Road, sometime between uh, 21st of October and 23rd of October. The tanks contained what have been described as, quote, a large quantity of cattle semen stored in straws and compartments inside the cryogenic storage tanks. The size of the tanks stolen is not known, but police say their contents were of, quote, significant value. Cattle semen can be expensive depending on the quality of the bull. So, it... you 
remember years and years ago when you used to do the recorded version of the bit and you did a whole thing about beauty treatments that were terrible? Yeah. I was in that video. Yeah. And one of them was in London, they were using bull semen as a hair treatment. Yeah. I, so I assume that's where this was going. So what you had to do was gather your crew, your bros, your, your, your droogs, if you will, and say, fellas, and you know what? Let's not discrim discriminate. Ladies, non-binary. They could they could be all all manner of idiots there. Friends. Friends. Romans. <laughs> How do you get them all together, sit them down, and say, look, we're gonna make so much money. But there's a catch. Now Ha part of me thinks that this was like elaborate and there's like a bull semen fence out there waiting to help peddle the bull semen on the bull semen probably, black market. There probably is. Because Ireland has a lot of cow farmers. So, so that's on the one hand. The other hand is a couple of numbfucks who had a few saw something big and shiny or like throw that in the back of the truck and take it home. And as we learned a couple weeks ago, don't do that because it might literally be full of bees. <laughs> it can be full or, of bees or full of semen. I really you're taking your chances with the mystery door on and the <laughs> price is wrong. It's like surprise, it's semen. Why is that's a white market? Okay, spook. So, yeah, that's 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 uh, how long can that possibly keep for? Well, they've got it cryogenically frozen, that's part of what the article talks about. They've, oh, got, they've okay. got these uh, yeah, these big frozen liquid nitrogen tanks that they keep it inside, which that's already something you're fuck you, you don't want to fuck with if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. I learned that from Mr. Fucking Wizard. Don't because like they'd stick stuff in the in the uh, liquid nitrogen and just smash it. Smash it. Yeah, I learned that shit. And I mean, we all saw Terminator Two. Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't that be what that that would just be? A, you end up in the fucking emergency room with two of your fingers busted off. You're like, what happened? Fucking bull semen, man. What? <laughs> What did you do to that bull? <laughs> oh. Did you buy him dinner first? Oh, yeah, we have a Florida story. It is a very Florida story because this feels like something someone saw on TV and thought it would like, like, like one of those like Law and Order or some shit. They, they thought this will be perfect. I can't possibly get in trouble for this. What could go wrong? You can't take me to jail. Florida man allegedly lied to get his ex-wife's new boyfriend in trouble with the law, but got himself arrested instead. Now let me tell you something. If you say to them, you can't take me to jail, I'm going to let you know, yes, yes, they can. And they're, they're going to be really inclined to prove it. That's like, it's their one job. They can't, in fact, do that. They, they, they do it a lot. They do it in bulk. Yeah. They, uh, an ex-husband in Florida tried to get his ex-wife's new beau in legal trouble the effort boomerang back on him, and now he's been charged with two crimes instead. Uh, Rachel Biznath, 44, now stands accused of one count each, making a false report of a commission of a non-existent crime, and resisting an officer by obstructing without violence. Um, latest incident occurred on Tuesday. Biznath called the uh, 
the sheriff's office to report a threat against him. The deputy wrote in the court filing, upon arrival, business presented me with his two messages that he stated were sent from his iPhone to, to his iPad. Uh, business presented the messages that read, I will kill your kids before they turn old. Concerning message, I question the origin of the text. Business stated the text came from his ex-wife's new boyfriend. He allegedly did not maintain the story for very long. Okay, see, number one, the first rule here is simple story, stick with it, don't crack. Don't change your story, don't, don't, just don't. And maybe, maybe don't text yourself threats from your own phone. After talking with Bizneth, it was revealed that Bizneth actually created the threatening message and texted to himself in hopes of getting law enforcement to law enforcement to go to his ex-wife's residence. After that alleged confession, deputies moved to arrest Bizneth, but he allegedly protested and attempted to pull away from deputies uh, while saying, you can't take me to jail. Yes. They can. What you have done is a crime. Yeah. I don't know what you thought was going to happen. I don't know what you... Th oh, oh, okay. All right. You got me. You got me. Well, I just... That's 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 how it... Okay, I'll see y'all later. Thanks, thanks for... That's, that's not how that works. Not how that... Nope. What in the entire fuck, dude? Like, how was... I tested Bisnath to the ground where he then placed his hands under a, his stomach in an attempt to further resist detainment. <laughs> no, if you can't put the handcuffs on, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> this is the equivalent of, like, the kid that doesn't want to leave the store, so he just throws himself on the floor and becomes dead weight. Yeah, that's not gonna... gonna... No. Like, for fuck's sake, how is this going to work in the long term? Like, was he, look, see what he texted me about our kids? Yeah. Shouldn't we get back sure, together this text again? text comes from your number. I know. He got to my phone. <laughs> like, this, this fucking, it, like, he, I swear this is something he saw on TV and thought he could pull it off. And he's not a bright man. This is not a, this yeah. is not a, like, this is not a bright, and what yet, the f Was this supposed to make your ex-wife want you back? Right? Or was this just supposed to be like, fuck her? Now he's in jail. Well, what are you going to do? Yeah. He's not going to jail. You are, dipshit. <laughs> Naomi Washburn says, my hands are in my ass crack. That means you can't cuff me. <laughs> no, it just means they don't want to. They yeah. can. They will. They just don't want to. Now we're getting worse. Oh, my God. This is from Arkansas. Arkansan is what they call people from Arkansas. I learned that. The only useful thing I've learned from this article. Everything else I want to just. Oh no. Man caught in the act with stuffed animal. Arkansan, 55, busted after cop saw car, quote, rocking. They really went with if the car is a rocking, don't bother knocking. Because the guy inside may be trysting with a stuffed animal. Arkansas cop last Sunday morning spotted a suspicious car parked outside a commercial storage facility that had been broken into 16 times this year and 36 times in 2022. So because I don't understand. All right. That, that, that's near this. That's why the cop was there. It also speaks to they're incredibly bad at their job, but. As the yeah. sheriff's deputy noted, the vehicle in question was seen rocking. The cop looked inside the auto. He spotted Theodore Morgavin, 55, quote, having sex with a stuffed animal. Morgavin, a divorced father of three, lives about a mile away from the storage facility in Midway. 
Since Morgavin is on probation, cops are able to search him and his auto without need for a warrant. Get away from that. This is not a toy. Sorry. I have someone back here whap, 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 making noises. Anyway. Since Morgavin is on probation, cops are able to search him and his auto without the need for a warrant. According to a probable cause affidavit, excuse me, according to a probable cause affidavit that uh, search turned up methamphetamine, a syringe, and two marijuana pipes. Um, was charged with two felony drug charges and misdemeanor counts of public sexual indecency. Arrangement today. Uh, Morgavin, free on $5,000 bond, entered a not guilty plea. Last line of the story. Further details about the stuffed animal do not appear in court records. Well, good. Well, at least it didn't explode. Yeah, but I think he might have. That's the problem. Bad couple weeks to be a teddy bear. Bad couple weeks to be a teddy bear. What we can't, what we can't confirm it was a bear is the thing. We don't know what it yeah. was. Just it was a large... Is it... Huh? Here's the thing. Is it illegal... To fuck a stuffed animal in your own van? I mean, that's kind of public indecency. I guess, yeah. Because you've got to have your bits out. Yeah. Which, it's, there's nothing, okay, look. Consenting adults, nobody being hurt, privacy of your own home or wherever you have a private area aside from other people. Um, You're good. You're allowed. That's fine. It's when you take the show on the road. Yeah. It starts to have issues. Like, why the car? Why not go home? Yeah. Go home. But of course, you know, having meth and, you know, weed at the same time, you're probably not making very good decisions. True. I can't even imagine what doing those both at the same time would be. I, I guess the closest I'll ever come is to be like, you know, drinking a monster while on NyQuil. I think that's about the closest I'll ever get. I mean, when I was in chemo, they would hit me with a truckload of Benadryl and then a truckload of steroids. So I'd be groggy, but also like have temporary restless leg syndrome. But again, I imagine something like that. Neither of us, you know, defiled teddy bear in public. Yeah. Yeah. That is not a good drug. We said so often, if we can teach you nothing else with this show, it's that meth. Meth is the bad drug. That is a mugshot too. That that is that is a dude. Good <laughs> yeah. God! You know, if you told me to pick the guy out of the lineup who was cranking it with a stuffed animal, this is not who I would imagine. This is this, and yet I don't know who I would imagine, but not this. This guy looks like an extra on a cop show. Yeah, kinda. Kind of, right? Okay, well, we, moving along. This is Florida. Again, unfortunately. We have all got, done something at work and gotten written up or, or some sort of uh, citation or, or just some sort of bullshit at work. We have all dealt with this. Most of us will either have oh funny most of us will either have one of two reactions it will be like you suffer it in silence and deal with it because you need a job or fuck you i quit there is a third option um it's the bad option because well as with most bad options it involves arson Woman accused of setting car on fire in Tarpon Springs uh, after disciplinary action at work. Tarpon Springs, Florida. 
A woman is accused of setting a car on fire in the parking lot of a Tarpon Springs business because she was upset about being disciplined at work. Called 11 a.m. Friday through the Tarpon Tower on East Martin Luther King Jr. Drive after it was reported that a woman tried to start a fire. Officers arrived to find a vehicle on fire in the parking lot, which was allegedly started by Amber Marie Galbraith, 35. Uh, Galbraith was an employee at one of the businesses inside the building. She was upset about disciplinary action at work and showed up with, quote, ignitable liquids. Boys inside stopped Galbraith from entering the building, which is when she allegedly set the fire, set the vehicle on fire in the parking lot. Galbraith was charged with arson, battery, and obstruction. She did a fucking number on that car, too. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to set the building on fire. Right? <laughs> Fucking office yeah, space. That's going to get you in less trouble at work. Look at what she did to that fucking car. I don't think that's going to solve your work problem. Have you ever seen that, that meme picture of like, you know, the really intricate drawing of a horse that just gets progressively. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that car. Look at that fucking yeah. car. Jesus Christ. No, I mean, your first response to be getting a disciplinary action at work, not fired. That's what's really blowing my mind here. Not fired. Right. Still employed. I mean, you're probably fired now. But you were still pulling down a salary or paid, get paid hourly, still employed. You still had a job. Dale. Not fired. Fired is the kind of rage I associate with this bullshit. I have been fired. You've been fired. We've all been fired at some point in our life. It is rage inducing. Not getting written up. Because yeah. I, what was the good outcome is what I want to know. Like your boss looks out in the parking lot and goes, oh, Okay, well, we'll just you know, forget about that. You're fine. I've really come around to your point of view on this, right? Dennis. You might have something there. I will grant it to you. I didn't think about it that way. This brings a whole, whole new definition to, could this meeting have been an email? Yes. <laughs> Just email a GIF of a burning car. Right. There you go. The fuck? All right. I'm sorry to do this. This thing is literally giving me a migraine. Uh, that's all right. I'll put it back on for the second half. Okay. But it's squeezing my brain, which is concerning because I was going to wear it all day for trick or treat tomorrow. Well. It happens. Um, so, let's see. one more this week, and I think one of probably the worst inventions in in the history of of mass marketed junk that we that we uh, consume has got to be Four Loco. Has anything good come of Four Loco? Do they still make that shit? Well, Tara, they still make that shit. Man drinks four, four locos, destroys gate, forces airfield shut down. That's as many as 16 locos. And that's <laughs> terrible. Nashville, Tennessee. Man was arrested for destroying a gate and a private hangar near the Nashville International Airport driving into it several times. On Wednesday, officers with the Metro Nashville Police Department were called to a single car crash near uh, 603 Hangar Lane. When officers arrived, they found a black Nissan Altima drove into the vehicle gate that leads to the airfield. At the time, there were no open occupants in the car. Police say they found several open cans of Four loco. 
Officers shut down the airfield to find the person responsible for the wreck. They also want to make sure there wasn't a breach of the airfield. Police say they found Felipe Perez. Perez? Yeah, Felipe Perez. Inside one of the private hangars, Perez was detained. An officer said they noticed he was under the influence. Perez had red bloodshot eyes that were glossed over. Shirt slurred. slurred, 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 slurred <laughs> Thank you for demonstrating. Slurred speech and an alcoholic beverage. So he was still chugging the four loco. Officer said they were able to get video footage of the incident that saw Perez pulled up to the gate around 1.43 a.m. and was messing with the keypad. Shortly after, Perez drove his car into the gate four times, then left his car and ran toward the airfield. What the fuck? <laughs> I love sometimes when we do these, you're, you're, you're trying to catch... To, to, like you're coming catching it later after me i've already gone through the through, through the what the yeah fucking <sighs> Perez told police he drank four four locos and was driving his nephew to get some of his belongings where he was working before driving into the gate Perez said after the crash he got scared and went ran away yet he got scared and ran away still carrying the booze so you drove into the gate four times before you got scared and ran away. <laughs> oh, poor decisions. Also, poor... where's your nephew? Yeah, right? People, some of the people on the channel are like, what is Four Loco? Don't. Don't. It's, it's like, it's super caffeinated. And super alcoholic. It's like yeah. if you took if you if you took a vodka Red Bull and threw in a chunk of crystal meth. Yeah. It, it's it like I I don't a lot of you probably don't remember the original Jolt Cola advertisement. It was uh, all of the sugar and twice the caffeine. That was the selling tagline for Jolt Cola. It's like all these years later, someone saw that and went, oh, I can beat that. Well, and now they're doing that at Panera. Yeah, I saw that yeah. one. Ugh, fucking hell the yeah. charged lemonade. And here's here's the funny part. I would at work when, when I was in chemo and had really bad fatigue and everything tasted bad. I would routinely get like a 40 ounce one of those. And drink it over the course of my work day. Well, and it, it and it kept me going through the work day. <laughs> and now some poor girl died and I'm like I probably should not have been drinking that shit while I was in. Like I have I have had so many monsters in such a short period of time. I don't do it anymore. I I'm I'm sitting here going, how am I alive? How does that 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 shouldn't work? Four loco is just a bad, bad idea. It's I do the, the best. Yeah, the, the, as the Chad's pointing out, the problem with super caffeinated alcohol is that it kind of counteracts the effects of the alcohol. So you don't really understand how drunk you are. I, I do. I the part I love about this the most was that he took off running across the airfield, but he had the can with him the whole time. Gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> okay, so that that was those were the uh, the stories for this week. But wait, we're not done. Um. Anyway, what did we learn this week? We'll get that quickly. Um, we've learned four loco is very bad for you. Do not do four loco, yeah. or you will storm an airfield. Which may it's have like if meth was legal. Yeah, I mean, for loco. In World War Two, for loco might have you know storming an airfield would have been, but not you know, Florida. That's not a. Um, <laughs> we've learned if you haven't actually been fired, maybe setting a car on fire is just a step too far. If you haven't been fired, don't set a fire. Right there, you go. We have learned that in even if you have been fired, don't set a fire. 
Yeah, probably not. Learn that in America, it is in fact legal for in the privacy of your own home you to do things with whatever accoutrement you have procured. Not in the car, in the public, because yeah, that is. We've learned I that put this back on, and Valkyrie is just sitting in the hallway looking at me like, "What have you done?" <laughs> Hi, baby. We we do we, I look pretty? We've learned that if you have to say you can't take me to jail, you're going to find out. Yes, yes, they can. Yeah, um, that's typically how that the arc of that. We, we've learned that there is a market for all sorts of illegal goods, including stolen bull semen. I never thought I'd have to say out loud. And finally, we've learned that if your boat is on the verge of catching fire, maybe it's time to stop chartering the boat. Yeah. Maybe don't take people's money to ride on your death boat. Don't be like, God damn it, I've been doing this for 50 odd years. I'm a still do it. No, no. That's. I mean, I realize that's a bit of a catch 22 because, you know, how are you going to pay to fix the boat? without chartering the rides, but maybe we don't want to like kill people. This is, this is like the, the weirdest modern take on yeah. the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. 